road, minor lot split with variance. Steve, would you like to explain <clears throat> to us about this? A little bit of explanation. I've been in contact with uh, Melissa Conta, um, and she would like to obtain a piece of property um, from the family. And you do have some documents related to that. What might clarify it a little more is a, a drawing that I did uh, give you an idea of the size of the lot as it exists right now, which I believe is a little over eight acres. Um, 8.72 acres. Um, and it's just up Route 682, um, from 682 on Boar Ridge. Um, within three miles of, of the city. That's why the city has subdivision jurisdiction over it. Um, that's the drawing that I'm talking about right there. Um, it's essentially a two-acre piece um, out of the center or the midsection of, uh, of the parcel. Um, you did also have a soil study that was submitted, um, as far as I know, yet to be reviewed by the health department. Um, that was done by a firm called a company called Terra Firma, um, soil investigations. This is the type of report when Mr. Hammer's been here that he requires now um, in order to review requests for private sewage disposal systems. So, but I don't have any indication that uh, the health department's looked at that. Also, um, I provided to you also a, a couple mock-up private driveway uh, easement. easement agreements. Um, these are these are used by the county um, reg uh, regional planning commission, Athens County Regional Planning Commission. Um, you do have a document in the package that's an agreement signed between um, the applicant and the current owner of the property, um, which I'd recommend be recorded also. So in the future, there's no dispute about who maintains this private easement. <coughs> Outside the city, the county permits up to four splits. Um, off of a private road. Um, to one lot, where it's only going to service one lot, the width of the easement has to be at least 30 feet. In the case of two or more, it's 50 feet. There was no indication on the drawing, um, this drawing, of the exact width. But the county standard is 30 feet to one lot, 50, uh, 50 to two or more. Um, I guess besides that, that's the information I was provided. It's a, it's a request for a minor lot split without road frontage. Um, there's a section in the city regulations that say you, your lot has to front on a public road at a minimum width. Um, so that's why there's a request for a variance. And the, um, but we still we don't know the width of the of the easement at this point. Not exactly, no. Okay. Questions. Um, I find this premature to be before us prior to having the City County Health Department approval. Yeah. The City Department, the Health Department asked us to come here. Oh, really? Because I, I talked to the Health Department and I talked to Mr. Pearson, and both of them like, this is what you need to do. So we would, you, would you like to come up to the uh, microphone. microphone and tell us who you are, and then we can have a record of, of your testimony? We'd actually talk to. Uh, tell us first your name and where you live. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My name is Melissa Conkle, and I live at 7911 Four Ridge Road. And the question was, um, how we, about the health department? Right. We had talked to the health department. We talked to Chuck Hamner, and he's the one who had suggested doing you know the soil test and everything like that. And then I'd also talked to Steve Pearson, and he was the one who told us about the easement and having to come here for the lot split. Um, I made up the little, I did that prematurely on my own. There is 30 foot of red, front, red frontage there on the property. Um, I've been in contact with Chuck. Chuck has not seen the soil test because when I called Steve, I asked him if I thought Chuck needed, because I had that whole packet ready. Mm -hmm. And he said he didn't need to send it to Chuck. But I don't think he was realizing the soil test was in there. <laughs> so I can send that to Chuck today. I can even take it over to him. So you can look at that too. We just a couple um, a month ago we had somebody who did a lot split and the health department did not um, <laughs> accept the fact that there was enough 
appropriate drainage for a, a for a, a septic system, and it was all sorts of problems. So I think I would also feel more, you know, a lot more comfortable if you went first to them and they say okie dokie and then. Okay, I just I think that I, it would just be yeah. much easier because if we okay it and then they say no way, it could just go back to what happened with the other, you know, landowner and and such. So I would suggest. Well, do you have any other, does anybody have any other questions about it? Because we could uh, um, alert. I would encourage um, the use of one of the, the sample um, right of, private right of way maintenance agreement. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've been provided that, but Steve mm -hmm. can provide a copy for, it for you for yeah. that. I sent it with the, uh, Ms. Conkle was copied on the, the memo from the 31st, so hopefully the mail's arrived. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I just had a copy. Yeah. Um, the question I have, and it's probably you more than anything else, Steve. This doesn't look like a two acres in the middle. It looks kind of small compared to eight. Is that actually to scale some kind, or um, maybe it's my it's one of those optical illusions? Well, I'm I'm not yeah. a surveyor. Okay. <laughs> I did the best I could to. Um, Take the drawing that I was provided, mm -hmm. use an aerial photograph of the property, and draw it. You know, draw it on there. And I was just guesstimating two acres as well because you know I, I don't know exactly how it is, but when I talked to Chuck Hamner at the health department, he said we had to have at least almost a full acre for the septic. Mm -hmm. So that's why I outlined mm -hmm. the complete septic area, that where our septic's already at, plus where we can have a new septic, than where our house would be at. So. May be a little less than two acres. It may be a little more than two acres. It's not exact because I haven't had it surveyed yet. Okay, and um, so there's a building structure already there. Right now, we are currently living in a trailer. Right there, right now, we've mm -hmm. been there for seven years okay. in the trailer. Um, the health department has already, when we moved in, they told us which culvert to put at the top of the road for our driveway. They even told us which septic system to put there mm -hmm. and we have our permit from them so what we're just doing now is we're trying to get a double wide and put it in that, put that property in our name so we can get the loan for it okay is there a minimum lot split um is two acres a minimum or does it not matter for the county um the minimum is one acre okay um when the city subdivision regulations were rewritten several years ago um, it used to be less than that, about a half an acre. From talking to the health department, though, most areas in the county um, need at least an acre for private sewage disposal system. So, for example, if someone could have a lot smaller than an acre and have a system approved, you'd run that through as a variance. So that's why the one acre was set as a minimum. And the minimum road frontage... Um, on a parcel less than five acres would be 90 feet, just so you know. There would need to be, an, the lot would need to touch 90 feet um, on an existing maintained public road. So this is easement, 30 foot easement, I guess, in lieu of 90 feet of public road frontage. So that would require a variance. That's the part. That's the variance. Yeah. That's Probably the best thing to do at this point is to table this uh, pending approval from the health department and the surveyor's report so that you have a, an accurate map. Okay. Um, but that's the only variance that we see at this point. I have a question. Then. Are you you're requiring a survey also? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I was trying, groping for, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, would somebody like to make that motion? I move your table. Setting a, uh, surveying a, <laughs> and a septic system. Okay. If I may, um, I would encourage you to have it um, reviewed and approved by the health department prior to going to the expense of having it surveyed. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay, so we'll see you back when you have the health department approval and survey. Okay, thank you. Okay, next case is 
0807 Mitch Endick, 7007 North Blackburn Road, rezoning request. Yes. Steve? You. Um, I recently spoke with the applicant, Mr. Mitch Endick, about a property he owns at 7007 North Blackburn Road. Um, it's just on the edge of the corporation limits of the city of Athens. I'm at the intersection of 50, Routes 5032 and North Blackburn Road. Um, should have a, a drawing like this that indicates the uh, location of the property. Actually, have should have two. One of them indicates current zoning, and one indicates the proposed zoning. Um, went through the application process with uh, Mr. Endek, and we actually sat down, went through the code, and kind of did this check off sheet um, for all the things that were required for an application to amend the zoning map. Uh, the proposal is to take that particular piece of property and um, zone it B1 neighborhood business as opposed to its current zoning R1 single family residential. In conversations with Mr. Endek, and he can elaborate on this a little more, one of the um, one of the things that he thought might be more appropriate in this area would be uh, a business or professional office, um, which is a principally permitted use in a B1 neighborhood. So, um, there are some copies in addition, and the packet of information you should have gotten that are printed from the City of Athens Comprehensive Plan related to the US 50 corridor. <laughs> That's just about all, all I have, unless you have any questions. So this is to the west of North Blackburn, right? Yeah, be on the west side of, of North Blackburn Road. Just as you turn turn off of 5032 onto North Blackburn, mm -hmm. this house is just immediately on the left, right at the intersection around the corner. It looks as though um, in that location there are some storage lockers. Behind this particular property, I believe there are there's a mini storage complex owned by Mr. Endek, or at one time owned by him, which is not in the city. Oh, okay. The existing structure is residential now. Um, right now, it um, it's a rental property, R1 single family, uh, three maximum unrelated persons. So there's a rental permit currently in place. I know Stevie provided us with a comprehensive plan pages. Um, I do want to make note that it did say some places along the corridor would offer suitable development for commercial, suitable locations for commercial development. But then also under implementation, they talked about a new rural residential zoning district is thought to be needed to generally apply to these areas They're right there within the city limits. And I've also noted on this and highlighted on 241 that they say. Uh, an opportunity to advance conservation design is the preferred residential development approach. I would also note that there was discussion about having an overlay zone for this uh, general corridor for gateway purposes. Your comments, questions? What is the general area around it? Like, is it all single family residential right now? Um, Kimes Lane, as you come up North Blackburn, Kimes Lane takes off to the right, um, back up toward town fairly quickly, and you drive back probably a quarter of a mile, and that's where uh, Kimes Convalescent Center is at. Um, across, across the street on South Blackburn, there's also a uh, a parallel access road that was constructed at the time the highway went through that goes back to a motel. Um, but generally the uses up and down Blackburn are single family residential. Now, the Planning Commission looked um, at a piece of property just on the other side of the highway recently too um, with requests for B3 and R3 zoning, uh, property owned by Mr. Fred Weber um, just within the past few months. 
and in that case we decided that um, it wasn't appropriate to have a B zone surrounded by the Rs. Mm -hmm. And we also noted the uh, traffic problems coming out on either north or south Blackburn mm -hmm. onto the highway. The state, I believe, has told us there's no possibility of a traffic light there because of traffic coming up the hill on the highway not being able to see stopped cars ahead of it. And equally, if you come out of North Blackburn, um, you can't see cars coming up the hill on the highway very easily. It's kind of, it's a dangerous intersection. That's one of the reasons that we uh, dragged our feet about by um, student, proposed student housing mm -hmm. complex behind times because mm -hmm. it was going to be 400 or 600 mm -hmm. people coming out onto the highway mm -hmm. there. An inadequate intersection. Yeah. Also, <clears throat> under the underlying portion, I guess there's already some limited commercial industrial uses along, but along the flatter portions, and that's hardly a flatter portion of the road. Right. Okay, Mr. Andrick, would you like to sure. come wherever you'll be recorded and speak to us? I'm Mitch Endick, and I think that using this zone for a B1 would be a much better use than an R1. I have a PowerPoint presentation I'd like to run, if I may. Sure. I can either read it or just leave it up and there's some writing on it, so... Everybody can read I think we can probably see the the writing from here. And the mics are there too, so you yeah. can always annotate it if you want. <clears throat> I can understand that it's a it's a dangerous intersection and there is some some R1 housing around it, but there's intervening variables. This is the house. And this is the front yard. And um, if I can run this thing. This is across the street. There's a residential home across the street, and that is the view that they have. And of course, on the left-hand side is um, the storage barns. On the right-hand side, there's a sign for the for the kinds. And then I I ran this just so you can see where this is on the highway. Mm -hmm. When you come out here, it's right in that corner. This is a help. I have three good reasons for a, for a zone change request. I feel I feel the property better fits a business zone. I feel it's consistent with the city of Athens' comprehensive plan, and most important, I think the change uh, would make the property much safer uh, for travelers and for people living on or people at the property. And I can I, I have some reasons for all these, so if I can. Everybody's yes. reckon. The first reason um, is it's more of a it's more of a B1 than an R1 in my mind because um, the major highway out front, which according to the Department of Transportation, has between 12,000 and 17,000 vehicles a day going by, and they're coming by pretty fast. There's no doubt. Um, second reason is I feel an R1 zone should be quiet, but there's a lot of traffic and noise 24 hours a day out front and dust. A third, a third reason um, is the R1 zone should be safe, but I've had a family live in the house. I've had the house for seven years. I had a family live in the house. They instantly lost a dog, almost in the first week. They were scared to death. They had let their kids out the door. And they lost a second dog and finally moved. Um, and then the third, or the fourth reason on this is I feel an R1 zone should have a residential feel. I'm going to show you the view on th the three sides from the front so we can see what we actually see. And here's one of the sides here. Um, this is, you know, three sides, two sides. This is a look from the front porch out front. And obviously you're just looking at a highway. This is a look from the front porch to the left, 
and you're basically seeing the motel and the sign for Kimes, and that's the access road up to Kimes. And again, it's not really in keeping with what I think is a residential area. This is the view from the porch um, to the out of the city side, and what you're seeing is basically um, storage units, and occasionally you get night move-ins and moves out, move-outs, and that sort of thing. So. My first point is that I think it's really more of a business field than a residential field. And my second, my second overall point is um, I felt that the change from um, to B1 is, is in keeping with the city of Athens' comprehensive plan. Um, and I took a, a quote out of that. Um, the, the, the actual housing in the, in that corridor, it's um, once you get past my property, um, it's very little um, R1. It's more or less kind of sprawl sort of thing. People have different sized properties, different situations. So then my third reason, which I think is the most urgent reason, is um, a safety reason. Um, the, the zone it's in now allows either a family or up to three unrelated people to live there. I've had no success running into families. Uh, I've had let students go in there. And um, it, it winds up being a party house because for several reasons. Um, it's, it's easy to find because it's right on the highway. So you can tell your friends, go to my house. It's easy to find. Number two, it's on the edge of the country. So people can, they party out there in the yard and stuff. They're, they think they're in the country even though they're in the city, but it's easy to find. And so, and there's really no noise issue because they're sort of out in the country, even though they're not. So, this is a picture from inside the kitchen of the house, which was taken 4208. And they have a huge collection of booze bottles. And, They've given up on saving them, I think, because that was the same collection they had a year ago. But they're saving them. So I just, and that's inside, the house is a really nice house. Um, has all original woodwork. Um, so it's my urgent plea that rezoning this property to a, to, um, a B1 from an R1 so I can attract a small office use. And reasoning being, again, I, I wrote up there, um, People that are going to be in an office, can't be a very big office, but an office, they're not going to consume alcohol in an office, except maybe a Christmas party. Um, they're not going to be using the intersection at night. It's going to be, they're just going to use it daytime. Whereas if I have three students in there and their buddies, they're using it whenever they use it. And people are pulling out of the intersection, you know, some of them may be inebriated, and it's just going to be a lot safer. The other point is um, a B1 use does not allow more, it does, it's no change in the actual housing situation. So I can't put five people in there or six people in there. It's still limited to three unrelated people. So there's no change in that. And that's my little <laughs> advertising part of me. <laughs> that's, that's my plea. Okay. Any questions? So you have it rented right now? It is rented right now. And the storage units are yours on the other, to the west? Yes, sir. Okay. How do you access the storage units? There is a 50-foot right away um, off the road behind the house. Okay. That goes right back to it. It's, that property with the storage units is about nine acres, give or take. And they're two separate lots? Yes. Okay. The storage units are out of the city. And the front of the house actually is on the highway, right? Yes, it is. There's no yeah. sidewalk. There's um, a few back. There was a picture of it. But there is no sidewalk. Mm -hmm. You can literally walk from the yard into the highway. I thought there was a fence there. There is a fence, but it, only, it stops. Uh, if I can go back. Maybe I can go back on this. And there it is. Mm -hmm. This fence stops right about here, 
and your, your road is the other road's right here at Blackburn. Uh -huh. So a, a child or anybody can just walk over here and just be around the highway. There's no, there's no, this is the house here, there's no fence here. Mm -hmm. So you just walk around the highway. This is the original steps back when it was, a, back years ago when it was a smaller, less traveled road. It's just been abandoned, basically. Other questions? So, and, okay, uh, technically a B1 is like, an, as you say, a neighborhood business. Um, what do you envision here? I guess when you say an office, I mean that most offices are neighborhood office? A small office. Small office. Okay. And right. it's pretty much surrounded by our residential zones, it looks like. Um, Except for behind it. <laughs> well, behind it, so. Yeah, it's, it's a residential zone. Um, well, west of it's not residential. West of it is, um, is I've got a map here. <clears throat> it's all B2. It's all comes down for the motel and for cons. Yeah, it's it's not just all it's not just all residential at all. Okay, the map I'm showing here is B2 stops <laughs> before it gets to a date contiguous with the property line. If I'm correct in this map, this is. Mm -hmm. Map you got thrown right here, is that it? Yes. Okay. Yes. So now this is on. A meeting room. This yeah, is this, is, uh, this is what we looked at when we were looking at the at yeah. Fred Weber's property. Okay. It was like that, and that was the only B that was near it was the, that B2. Okay. And it's not contiguous. Um, is there a possibility of doing a variance? I have a, I have a hard time because it kind of says to me of, um, of spot zoning, mm -hmm. of, uh, establishing a special zone for one lot that's surrounded by um, zones that are not even of the same ranking. You know, you're, R, you're mm -hmm. surrounded by R's. You have no contiguous B's or anything. So we just looked at some rezoning and for the union and there was other things that are contiguous with it so we didn't have any right. um, and you know there is an argument spot zoning is illegal so there is you know some issue of that um, is there a possibility of of um, variance or other ways of trying to achieve I I see what you're saying in your arguments and I think your arguments are valid and reasonable um, I just think that you know there's some issues in setting a precedence for for some of this in my mind so is there a possibility of doing variants or the zoning code allows for business and manufacturing variances so that would be another way of, of doing this right possibly. the, the um, Board of Zone Appeals can grant a use variance for business um, although I'm not sure if they can do that in an R1 zone where business is prohibited, um, it's not real clear. But there is, you can have a business variance. Now that first has to be reviewed by the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission makes a recommendation to the Board of Zone Appeals before the Board hears the case. Okay. One point, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. One point I wanted to make was that in my mind, R1 seems to be um, a high residential use. And when you have something like 15,000 cars driving by a day, I just cannot see that being residential. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And, and it is, it's obviously a state highway, and there are other zones around it. If you look at East State Street, which I have a business on, um, East State Street is obviously a, a business area, but when you go back several properties off of East State Street, it becomes residential. So it's not, it doesn't seem that, that different to me. This situation doesn't seem that different to me. I'm sitting right on the highway. I'm not two doors up from the highway saying, hey, I want to be a business. I am right on the highway. I couldn't be any closer. Right. And I, I, I see what you're saying there. But there's a, a question of um, precedence of we allow you, and then somebody four lots down says, oh, I want it, and four lots down. And then all of a sudden, you have this checkerboard. And it's just a question of, of ensuring that the the zoning you know we have reasons for zoning and to make sure that it's you know appropriately applied and changed in appropriate manners you know and and 
I mean, if the county had zoning and the behind you was, you know, business or whatever, but the county doesn't have zoning, so we can't really look at that. So, I mean, you're surrounded by R1, so you'd be kind of like this little island, you know. So, I mean, that's that's a, an, an issue. I think it's more of an issue for me of, of a mm -hmm. precedent. So, well, there's another point, and um, that is that the address of the property is on North Blackburn Road, and if you drive along North Blackburn Road, the rest of it is residential. Mm -hmm. um, I would think if even if there's a variance so that you could have a business there, there's got to be some sort of strict limitation on what kind of business because <coughs> one that's going to attract a lot more traffic is is really bad news there. Um, I think that that traffic problem at North and South Blackburn both um, is something that the comprehensive plan didn't really take into account if maybe they weren't really looking at that part of, mm -hmm. of 50. But um, it's uh, anything that makes that worse traffic, and I, I get your point about the nighttime parties and so it's on. It's reality. Oh, I don't it's doubt It's reality. It. It's happening it happened this weekend. <clears throat> I, I don't doubt weekend. it would be a very attractive place to have a party, and the neighbors yes, are far is. enough away so that they're not going to pester you. I'll be there this weekend and, and pull it out on the road this weekend. But it's, um, but I have the same problem that Christine has about um, the the precedent that it would set. Right. It, it is. It is not going to be. It is not just to, not to kill this. Not to belabor this point because this is really this is really important to me personally because um, I worry about the place. Um, but I have no. I have no choice. I have to rent it out, and I can't rent it out to a family who just won't live there. Anyway, it is not truly surrounded by R1. Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, I showed the pictures of what it looks like around there. It is not R1. But it's, it's surrounded, not surrounded by, by R1, R1 as far as as far as we have any control. As far as you have, you're yeah. right, as far as the city is yeah. concerned, yeah. where the city is, is there may be some R1, but the the township is next to it. On the whole side is township. Yeah. So it's not really surrounded in there. And, uh, State highway is in the front, so it, it, you know, that's who fronts it. I mean, it's a state highway. But anyway. <clears throat> Do you have any questions? Well, he mentioned that this is consistent with the comprehensive plan. And, uh, I'd like to find out exactly what you found there. Um, I felt it was. I've got a copy of it here. You just have to come up with that. I think it's the underlying part of 239. Actually, maybe it's not a PowerPoint. This is what he's referring to. Yeah. Then that's the contradiction that. Long, flatter portions, portions of the yeah. corridor, yeah. It's not flat there. Yeah. yeah, I think that the terrain and, and the uh, fact that cars coming up the hill from the east are picking up speed to get up the hill. And it makes the it makes coming out on Blackburn Road uh, really exciting. For actually, when you're up position. there, you have you have it's a hill. People are coming up both sides, and they're actually losing speed because of the fact that they're going uphill. The trucks lose speed. I mean, I've passed the 18 wheelers all the time, and everybody loses speed. But I understand what you're saying. Um, have you talked to any of the neighbors around there about this proposal? Um, I have not. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of my own neighbor. Right. But people who, you know, my, my concern is that this is just going to start this whole, you know, process of people coming in wanting to, you know, to start changing zones whenever, right. you know. Right. The, the neighbors behind me are all on really small lots. There's, there would be no room to park more than two cars. Mm -hmm. Um, most of the way up there until you get up to the farm area. So I don't foresee, I don't foresee that happening. They're really small lots. Right. But they also may be concerned that a business zone could have a reduction of value or, you know, there's a lot of different concerns mm -hmm. that property owners have mm -hmm. um, when it comes to sure. this sort of thing. So. 
Well, and that whole road is narrow and winding. Mm -hmm. Question, how big is this lot since that just came it's, up? Um, a pro I've got it. It's, I can tell you that. Um, it is 0.59, a little more than half acre. But okay. when they measure that, they there's two roads on it, and and you 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 figure that into the road, so it's not as big as it sounds. I mean, it's a little more than half an acre, but again, you don't get that much usable space. This is serviced by city water, or water? yes, okay. Sewer, I don't think you get yes. sewer too. Okay. Well, it's in the city. Yeah. Well, there are some places that get city water and oh, okay. not sewer. Yeah. Right. My street. Yeah, you have laundry. <laughs> right. That's why I was asking. Okay. What are we I will make a motion that we um, rezone this to be one. Seven zero zero seven North Blackburn. Okay. Uh, second. Well, I guess the motion <laughs> dies for like a second. Yes, I can try. Um, um, okay, H how about a motion to recommend the uh, variance for this to the Zoning Board of Appeals? I would second that. Okay. Uh, I would like to say in, uh, that I agree with Peg that we need to know more detailed information about what the use of the business right. would be there prior to the recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, so. Uh, you want to vote down this motion and go for a table? So just <laughs> part well, of I mean, part of, part of the yeah. variance procedure could be establishing which general business uses would be appropriate. Um, yeah. I, mean, I can't, I mean, what, what do you see as being able to do? Splitting the building into multiple offices or, you know, what is... Um. I would think that a handicap ramp would have to be built, and then the downstairs is suitable for, you know, maybe a, an office of some sort. Um, there's, um, it's a fairly large house, um, and it's three stories, but you can't get upstairs. Right. Um, you can't so, use it legally um, okay. because of handicap access. So, um, I would say one small office. And would that like be real estate or massage therapy or it, doctor's office? It could office? be. It's not me, so it's, right. I, I, I mean, I might want to use it personally eventually, but I'd like someone else to step in and take it right now. I don't need mm -hmm. this at the moment. Well, so I, I wouldn't know. I would, it's, it's not an easy town to rent an office in. Yeah, that's what we were told last meeting, how much office space is empty. So. Yeah, it's just not an easy town. There's not a lot of business people or business but, need. But I think uh, you know, what what uh, Paula is talking about, what I was talking about, is uh, some way of actually limiting the kind of traffic that's going to come to it if it's an office, and uh, whether you do it by the type of business or whether you do it by a business that wouldn't attract more than you know, eight cars a day, or I don't I don't know how you how you can. <coughs> Limited. Do you have any thoughts, Steve? No, the category for permitted use is pretty wide open. It just says business and professional office. doesn't mm -hmm. talk about different types of businesses or types of offices. Is there in the um, home, bus home office, home business uh, section of R1, is there any description of what you can do as a home business? Sure, home, home occupations, home okay. businesses are permitted, um, even in R1 zones, as early as R1 zones. You can use up to 50% of the interior area of the home for the business use. Um, there have to be no exterior features that make it appear to be anything but a single family home. Uh, the entrance to the office or business space has to be from within the dwelling, in other words, not a separate business office mm -hmm. and not a separate area of the home. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can have one person um, who's not a resident of the property work with you um, in the home um, for your home occupation or home business. So that is permitted in an, in an R1 zone. What if we kept it as an R1? And that would be the problem, <laughs> exactly what Steve said. That would, be, that would be the problem because, number one, you have no signage. Mm -hmm. R1, no signage. So why be on the highway? Ask for a variance for the sign. Mm -hmm. 
can you can ask, but will you get? Is another question. Um, also, it's it, it's really limiting. I mean, it limits what you can do as far as as far as size and as far as one person to help. I mean, but that's what the, we're the trying chances, to do. I'm sorry. That's what we're trying to do. It's yeah. limited. Yeah, but 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 the chances of being of me being successful finding this exact little piece of puzzle mm -hmm. that could fit into this situation is very minimal. What's going to wind up happening in reality is students are going to stay there. That's just that's just what you're telling me. Because right. when you try to when you try to narrow me down to a corner, I mean I'll try, but I know I'm not going to get it probably. Because you can't tell someone, well, have a business on the highway, but don't put a sign out. Or you can go to try to get a sign, and there's going to be a little sign. I mean, it's just um, either we either have to use the zoning or not use the zoning. I think it's like a, you know, and if I can find someone, then I'll, we'll come back and, and ask. I mean, I'm not sure what the procedure is, but I'm sure Steve can tell me. But I think that to be successful, I need to get a, a, a B1. To successfully turn us into an office. Uh, Paula, do you have any more to say about the? I think my my general concern about an office isn't necessarily going to be the the number of vehicles, because I think any types of offices that are going to go there are going to be pretty low volume. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't mm -hmm. say that for true. I could mm -hmm. see it being an increase in traffic versus the residential use that it is mm -hmm. now. So. But with with college students, that I mean, mm -hmm. especially because they're they're commuting to school from there, so with three college students, that's a pretty large. Yeah. It would. What well, what I see it doing is changing the traffic patterns to daytime use, and not necessarily increasing it, um, but decreasing it on the weekends and in the evenings. Um, from that particular place, so um, um, which and you know I think that the the party it would decrease party traffic, you know, so that would be so that would be a trade off for the that would be a trade off. Yeah. Uh, okay, what? Yeah. Uh, how much parking is there right now? Mm. There is approximately five spaces. Okay. Um, and the students, and just get back on, the students drive back and forth to their classes. Mm -hmm. So they're going back and forth all day be, during the day. They're going back and forth, their friends are coming over. But there's additional parking. They can they swing around and park up at storage barns. And they also park on the access road to Kimes. Mm -hmm. So when there's a party or when they're having friends, there's plenty of parking for them. And um, is this soil slip prone in that area? I'm, I don't know. Okay, just wondering. Yeah. But there's not a lot of parking there at the moment. I mean, I imagine somebody with somebody might be able to put a few more spots in. I haven't done it. I I kind of dissuaded them <coughs> from having cars parked there, but they find places. Is the parking area paved that they're using? No, it is not. Okay. Uh, what <laughs> What is the motion that we're? My discussing? motion was to recommend this to the zoning board appeals for B1. Um, I think I got a second on that. Yeah, you did get it. Uh, I think Paul is asking about conditions in terms and, of putting it to a B1. Okay, and we'll... Um, it wasn't to go to a B1, it was no, for a... Um, a business use variance. variance for business. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, use variance for business. Mm -hmm. As a... Keeping it in R1 and making it a use variance yes. for business. Okay. Recommending. I, recommending it. Okay. I think, you know, in the future, if you know, through the Comprehensive Plan Advisory Committee, you know, there is this overlay zoning that starts going in and starts being applied to, to these things, then this would also keep the options open in the future. Cause, um, so I'd hate to start doing this all, you know, helter-skelter all up and down, um, you know, the street here, the, the highway, so. Anybody else? If Harry? that's the um, case, though, then you wouldn't want to change it over, or even for a use variance. Variance in theory. Unless they put a condition in that variance, it goes with the property for quite some time. Mm -hmm. But it's not permanently changing the zone. Okay, the motion then to um, deny the to deny the B one request, but to send it to the planning commission for a use. Of, I mean, the planning commission, no, to so the zoning zoning board of appeals for. Um, um, use 
variance to allow a business to be there. That's a dual so motion then? No, I, I think we, no. I don't think we yeah. decided. I think the first one when it died for lack of second was mm -hmm. yeah. to deny them for you. Oh, all right. Okay, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so this is actually just. We're right. talking about B1 or we're not talking about B1? We're talking about recommending to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Yeah. What do I have down? Do you have something down? Mm -hmm. To recommend to the Zoning Board of Appeals that they grant a use variance for this property and not change the zone. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 That sounds about right. And we were going to attach something to it to ask them to look at minimizing the the type of business. The type of business. Or, yeah, so. Minimizing the traffic. Yeah. Okay. Everybody in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Is there a all all those opposed? Aye. 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 Okay, so that so that dies. Okay. Um, I have a question then. Yes. yes. Um, the recommendation then to the Board of Zoning Appeals is not to permit the business use in an R1 zone. If Mr. Endek wishes to appeal to the board for that, there's no recommendation. Yeah. No We're not recommending anything to the Board of Zoning Appeals. All right. Let me back up then a little bit too. If Mr. Endek would like to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals and ask for a use variance, should he come back to the Planning Commission and ask for that review? What happens is, I'm just, I'll just give yeah. an example. The, this happens quite often, business use variances in zones where that type of use is not permitted. The Board of Zoning Appeals has agreed with the Planning Commission and voted against the Planning Commission. I'd say it's probably 50-50. Um, whatever the recommendation is. The Zoning Board does not have to follow the Planning Commission's That's, recommendation, yeah. or it can. And so I guess that, so this is not a vote on a recommendation to the, grant a business use variance. This was simply this a vote to. Whether to send it to the Planning, to the Zoning Board of Appeals or not. Okay. And we voted not to. Oh. Now, are we going to vote on whether or not to change the zoning of the I we, we already did. did. Nobody had a second. Nobody. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I assume that in the packet that goes to the Zoning Board of Appeals, there will be two the minutes describing the fact that um, the uh, motion to change it to B1 was uh, was not seconded and therefore died before a vote. And I would assume that in the packet there would also be some wordage about the fact that there is a motion to send it to the Zoning Board of Appeals with a recommendation of giving a business use. And that died for lack of. Uh, oh, that was defeated. Yes, it's yeah. defeated. Right. Okay. Yeah. If you can just provide me the minutes of the meeting or a separate resolution, then it can be attached to an application for business use appeal. If Mr. Endek chooses to do that. Okay. That'd be great if I could get that in writing. Okay, Melissa. Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Communications. Paul, you have I have two. Um, if you could pass one That's um, announcing. Oh, yeah. Ooh, look at that. Uh, These are um, the proposed uh, changes to the wellhead protection ordinance. Um, inside these, they are in red. It's my understanding, according to our regulations here on page 7, any future modifications shall also be recommended to the Planning Commission. Bringing it to you, I know you haven't had advanced review of this. There are a few simple changes where they've identified the one-year capture zone. One-year capture zone. Changed it from five-year capture zone just to wellhead protection area. Registration responsibility, MSDS sheets. They struck out portions too. No, barely. One time ch changed a should to a shall. What about these sections? Are these struck out? Those were previously already oh, done by the planning out, so commission. Okay. Discontinuance of use adding the term or any other regulated substances. And then when you get to 2021, they've added some containment system issues. Um, 
So if you'd like to review them in more detail prior, um, because then from there it'll have to go to council committee and then council will ultimately have to adopt mm -hmm. them. Okay. okay. Does who worked on this? Mike Cooper and Crystal Kennard. Okay. So um, we could do this on the next, at the next uh, planning commission meeting. Did it, um, has anybody from the original Wellhead Protection Committee seen, reviewed it? I don't know. Okay. I guess the thing to do is forward to them. Yeah. Um, I would, I would suggest it since, since a lot of them are pretty bought in and if they don't like it, they'll just let it, let it be known. <laughs> More information than people are better. And then the second one was the um, proposed East State Streets divisional lane. Lot split. Lot split. Which I believe Mr. Spezza is here. Yeah, this is one. for Holzer Dogs, 2009 East State Street. Steve, you want to give a real quick brief how we got this sure. okay. Um Mr. Mark Spezza presented this information to me several days ago. Um, it's regarding property that was uh, where Columbia Gas was formerly located. There's one access point on East State Street right now. The land is not in the corporation limits of the city of Athens, although it does abut East State Street, um, a city street. The proposal was to permit two additional access points to, to a division of one lot into three. One lot using the existing access, two proposed lots accessed by two new um, curb cut access points to the highway. Again, because this is, it's related because it's within three miles of town, any, pro any proposal to subdivide the land would have to be approved by the Planning Commission. I believe there are about 15 acres there. Each of the three proposed lots is five acres or greater, so the width-to-depth ratio doesn't count or the road frontage doesn't count. Access, though, is a, you know, necessary no matter, or is a concern about accessing the lot, uh, no matter what size it would happen to be. Um, the Planning Commission has looked at land just east of this recently, um, where there was an existing access point through the um, state highway right away back to property that was owned by Ed Renzelli. Um, the proposal was to subdivide that large parcel of land into five um, separate parcels. Um, the request initially was for each to have its own access um, and that subsequently was not approved uh, by the planning or the service safety director as a member of the planning commission. That was that was last year. Um, there was one additional access point, I think, permitted, um, and then a private, private easement, private right of way uh, to access the other lots, as opposed to them accessing directly to the public street. And so, with that little bit of history from last year on adjacent parcel, now comes this parcel just immediately to the west. Uh, a proposal to subdivide it into three with two additional access points to East State Street. Okay. Mr. Spezza, would you like to speak? Uh, yes, my name is Mark Spezza. I'm with uh, Century 21 Classic Gold and uh, representing uh, uh, the property at uh, East State Street uh, for the uh, uh, Corporation Holzer Docks. Uh, the property is owned by uh, uh, several of the physicians uh, that actually uh, work at Holzer, but they are not related to Holzer in this request. Um, what they have is uh, fit over a 15 acre parcel. Uh, and have had that parcel surveyed into three parcels. Um, they are requesting uh, curb cuts to each of the parcels so that if, uh, in fact, in the future, uh, this group of six physicians decide to uh, split the parcels and each physician or each group of physicians uh, decide that uh, they will uh, take one of the five acre parcels and uh, uh, reconfigure uh, 
uh, ownership of the parcels, uh, they will each have equal access to the lots. Um, uh, so with that being said, I think that's the basis of uh, the request. Okay. Questions? Once again, we don't know the use. What use will be? Uh, they don't know the use either. Again, so we don't know the volume of traffic and what we're doing. They haven't. They they haven't identified uh, a purchaser. They haven't uh, you know identified any of that. Uh, you know, again, they've taken the first step of doing the survey, and uh, again, making a request for uh, access to East State Street for each of the lots. So this is speculative. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if I would call it speculative, but uh, what they have done is, as I said, uh, and uh, I would like to point out that, um, uh, again, based on uh, uh, the survey and some elevation points, mm -hmm. uh, each of the lot has uh, at least uh, two acres above the 100-year floodplain. Um, okay, so our question is that the lots really haven't been split. These are just surveys. This is not a real lot split. You're not coming. You're coming to us for the lot split or the curb cuts or both. Uh, I assume both. Okay. The the uh, lot splits. The lot splits have been surveyed. Uh, they've been uh, uh, the 15 acre parcel has been surveyed into uh, three somewhat equal size lots. They're all above five acres. Five okay. acres they have it, it has not been approved. It hasn't been recorded. The division of land. Right. It has been recorded with the county engineer. You mean you've had your survey check for That's mathematical right. for accuracy. accuracy? That's okay. correct. Um, I'd like to, to back up just a minute. When did uh, we receive this? We didn't get this in time for the agenda to be for it to be on the agenda. And since it involves lot splits and the curb cuts, um, it should have a case number and it should be on the agenda at the next planning commission meeting rather than at this one. Okay. Because we have the rule that we have to have everything by noon of the Thursday before the planning commission meeting so that we have a chance to go look at I understand that. Proposed I understand that. I was told that uh, <clears throat> this may be part of a discussion today, and that's why I'm here, just to, uh, you know, again, yes. clarify uh, what we're doing. Um, uh, I uh, I would like to, I guess, uh, somewhat reconfirm uh, uh, some of the information that uh, Steve had uh, pointed out uh, on an earlier uh, curb cut that was approved last year on the Renzelli property. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the situation there is a little different than this current situation in that the, the Renzelli property uh, uh, was in the city limits. Uh, and I think uh, Peg may uh, uh, remember uh, some of the aspects of that. Um, uh, that was split into uh, five, uh, five lots. Um, access to uh, uh, three of the most eastern lots uh, had to come through uh, one of the other lots because of the limited access highway in front of those lots. There was no way to provide direct access to those lots. Uh, uh, a curb cut was uh, uh, approved for uh, lot one on the Renzelli uh, property, as well as a curb cut uh, directly across from that on the north side of a, a 12 acre parcel that uh, Renzelli. Uh, also owns. Um, so there is some differences here, and I do, do want to kind of point that out so that uh, uh, if we do have a discussion at the next uh, Regional Planning Commission meeting that uh, uh, I can provide any clarification on that as well. And of course, let me uh, just point out that, you know, again, uh, part of the you know, whole comprehensive city plan is, uh, you know, the use and access to uh, some of this property uh, on East State Street. Uh, uh, between the Ranzelli property and the Holzer Docks uh, property, uh, there's about 35 acres uh, just on the south side that, uh, uh, again, can, uh, could be uh, uh, an instrumental part of the development of East State Street. 
and then maybe remembering some of the discussion before about the Renzelli property, uh, that makes it even more attractive to have a, uh, a frontage road. Uh, uh, so that uh, the curb cuts could be on the frontage, the frontage road. The frontage than, road that was uh, approved for the Renzelli property was approved, uh, again, because of the lack of direct access to East State Street. Uh, the other lot, lot one, was given direct access right. to East State Street, mm -hmm. uh, 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 creating, again, an access road here, may seriously impact uh, the bike path in that that access road would be literally right next to the bike path, if the bike path, in fact, is uh, moving forward uh, as planned. Well, that's okay. Uh, I mean, there are you would just basically be squeezing the bike path between two roads, essentially. There are so in, you know, yeah, again, but there are streets in town where part of the street is bike path. I'm not here to argue those points. All I'm here is to point out, uh, uh, you know, what uh, the planning commission may be looking at uh, there in the future. Well, that's uh, that's another reason, probably, for giving us another couple of weeks to. And I'd be happy. I'm happy to do that uh, again. As I said, you know, we're just kind of starting the process here, and I uh, want to give you as much detail as, or information as we can. And if you need any uh, additional uh, information prior to that meeting, you know, again, please feel free to uh, uh, ask me to provide whatever you're looking for. Okay. Um, I would encourage when you talk with the Bolzer box um, to think out the box also about maybe possibly. Combining curb cuts, not necessarily into a, um, a frontage road, or you know, trying to, because there is this significant issue of the bike path and safety, and we don't know the future use. And so, um, I would like to see you know some alternatives um, of and thinking outside the box, and find, you know, so that we can have a more informed discussion through the for it. So, uh, when you're uh, referring to um, combining curb cuts, um, not really clear on what your reference there is. In other words, to have some sort of access road all tied into one uh, well, lot? Well, I mean, what I, I can see maybe having one curb cut going into a joint parking lot <clears throat> or something. This, this may, in fact, be sold as three separate parcels. Uh, yes. And in fact, it may ultimately be sold uh, this year through uh, some auction process where only one or two of the parcels would be sold because, again, you're going to uh, potentially have different owners for each of these three parcels. That would be conditional, of course, whether we decide to give you a lot split or not. Right. Well, of course, and that's okay. what that's what we're here to decide. Yeah. Is uh, you know, again, uh, you know, whether this you know, Just functions what, if, you know. functions within uh, you know the city limits. Well, thank you for coming today. No and, problem. Uh, we will see you again on the on the seventeenth. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Could I mention one thing? Right. Um, right now, the city has not received application for minor subdivision of land. Um, surveys that appear have already been completed and checked for math accuracy mm -hmm. by the county engineer's office. But another one of the requirements for approval for a minor subdivision of land is approval from the health department. Um, mm -hmm. In a situation like this, for I believe anything for uh, four or more units or commercial use, um, an approval for a sewage disposal system is obtained by the Ohio EPA uh, to install, permit to install a sewage system. An alternative would be that city council would approve extension of public sewer outside the city. I believe right now there's one existing water tap to the old Columbia Gas, I think, had city water. Um, but they did not have, they had their own sewage disposal system. So that's another consideration uh, for approval of minor subdivision is how are you going to dispose of your sewage. Um, that approval has to be in place as one of the four or five conditions before the Planning Commission um, can grant a minor subdivision. Excuse me, be back here for a second. Uh, you know, again, uh, uh, we're in some preliminary uh, uh, phases or stages here, and since this is outside the city limits, uh, 
you know, again, uh, these being broken into uh, uh, five acre parcels, uh, it, it's totally possible that uh, uh, several of the physicians may decide that they want to go, uh, you know, along uh, the route of uh, uh, something other than commercial here, maybe residential or uh, some other zoning aspect. Uh, this property uh, is um, bordered by uh, two manufacturing zones. Uh, on the north side, it is a business zone. So, uh, you know, again, uh, uh, perhaps uh, 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 some additional thoughts or input from the city on this. Uh, 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 might be helpful in terms of uh, the direction they go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Any other communications? No. I don't. <clears throat> do you? Um, yeah, I do have one, and I cautiously bring this up, but I need uh, I do need some guidance. Um, about a month ago, um, there was a lot split proposal by Citizens Bank of Logan in the Plains. Um, the vote was two to one in favor of approving the split, and then there was a question whether that was if it failed or, or if it passed two to one. Because there was have, an abstention. Right, right and there right. was one abstention. Two one with one abstention. Um, I have today been contacted by Jim Lewis of Citizens Bank, and two weeks ago I was contacted by Gary Bond of Citizens Bank, and I've also been contacted by George Seymour, who was the surveyor. And the question is, was the split approved or denied? And well, the bank needs to know because, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, that will, that will drive how they'll market the property. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought it was going to be referred to Pat Lang. Mm -hmm. I brought um, it up to him. But yeah, that very response. day I did send an email to Mr. Lang, um, explain the situation to him. And, we um, haven't um, adopted the bylaws yet, and that was one of the things that is on my unwritten agenda for today. Uh, but the, in the bylaws, um, we have provided what we have done in the past is that um, if you have uh, three members present, you have a quorum, and uh, that uh, a uh, motion is passed if a majority of those voting for it, vote, uh, of those voting vote for it, which would mean it would be passed. But we haven't adopted those bylaws mm -hmm. yet, so. Um, well, I think the question is what, what, what the abstention does. Yeah, I mean, then, then. So. Uh, but if you say a majority of those voting. Right. Okay. Uh, then it would pass. Mm -hmm. But since we haven't adopted the bylaws yet, I think we have to wait for the law director to answer. Okay, all right. And believe me, I just cautiously brought that up, but I'd continue to get calls from the bank, and you know, they just they want to know what what it is they can and can't do. Forward them to Pat. Pardon me. Forward them to Pat Lang. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll ask Pat again and see if I can get a faster answer. Uh, I brought it up once at least, and I know you have too. Yeah, so. the mayor and I have discussed this, uh, you know, too, back and forth about, um, well, this particular issue. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe that would be a way to do it. Yeah, it would remind them. Forward. <laughs> the alternative would be to bring it up again. Uh, when we have a full commission to vote, but I don't know whether that's whether you can keep bringing up something until it finally passes. Or <laughs> not that. Mm. It doesn't seem like it would be right. That would we'd have to ask Pat Lang that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know okay. if you want to do. You could do that today. All five of you are here. No, you don't. Okay. Anything else you would like? Um, no, I don't have anything else. Okay. Um, we did talk about the bylaws last time, mm -hmm. and uh, does anybody have any objections or changes or anything you'd like to see to them, or made to them, or can we uh, have a motion to adopt them now? What do you think? I don't have a chance to review them. 
It's basically it's what we've been doing all along, but it isn't in it isn't in writing. <laughs> oh, they seem pretty straightforward. I mean, anytime you can get your bylaws onto one sheet, <laughs> that's pretty good. Very straightforward. Mm -hmm. It can be laminated. <laughs> Put the layers on. Yeah, I haven't seen you either. Mm -hmm. Maybe we yes. should hold off one time. Well, to, we, we, I'd hate to rush it in. Two funny. of the members haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I, I'd hate to see two abstentions and then we're back where we were. <laughs> We'd be asking Pat again. <laughs> we should just come to one of our meetings. How about if we hold off and just. Um, for the next meeting. To the next, okay, meeting. next full meeting, because I think, okay. Harry, are you going to be here next time? I'm counting on it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Last time, you know, was it? Block off for the um, threatened. All the bombs. Bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they wouldn't let you through. No, I couldn't get into the oh. garage. And... Oh. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, I got here just in the nick of time. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. Any. Uh, this is the opportunity for citizens to speak about items not covered on the agenda. Does anybody have anything they would like to talk about? <coughs> oh. Please come up to the. I'm Dimitris Prokos from Five Longview Heights, and uh, in the last meeting we were talking about a project on uh, Stimson Avenue, mm -hmm. and you guys came up with a good idea of maybe putting a green roof mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. on the building, and we had, uh, like I said then, uh, had explored that possibility lightly. Uh, since then we have explored it a lot uh, deeper, and. Um, um, I have with me Mr. Uh, Mike uh, Noll, uh, the architect of the project, and um, he has done a uh, um, little bit of work on how we're going to put a green roof on the building, and it is possible to do that. And um, if you'd like to hear from him, he can explain you, and he has some pictures of what we're planning to do there. I mean, what we okay. can, what the plan can be to do there. Okay. 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 Um, yes, so you thank you. I'll let you pass this around. This was actually a uh, brochure that's put out by Green Grid. Um, over the probably the last six or seven years, with the new push on our green environment and uh, designing lead buildings. Um, buildings that are more uh, concerned with its environment around this product has come out on the market. Uh, what's kind of exciting about this particular product, uh, in the old days when we did a roof design and were to put landscaping on it, it normally ended up being like big landscape uh, planter boxes that tended to be a couple feet deep of dirt, uh, extensive uh, roofing systems and drainage systems underneath them. Uh, this particular system has now been set up to be much similar to what you buy at, at the local um, uh, Walmart and Lowe's and Home Depot and those locations when you buy a planter box full of a whole bunch of flowers that you can buy a, a flat of it. It's been very much set up with that in mind and pretty much what occurs is that there are different levels of which the green roofs can be done. There are those that are more or less grasses. They're very short kind of landscaping. You have medium kind of landscaping and then a bit larger landscaping, which requires a little bit uh, more uh, media for the plants to grow in. Uh, what's exciting about the particular product is it does help the environment in the fact that it uh, cools the roof temperatures, uh, reduces down the heat buildups on the roofs that then basically go into the environment and increases our, our issues that we have with our planet at this time. Um, we have planned for those who are here, and I think we've sent a couple individuals an invitation to it on April 17th at the Holiday Inn uh, is a seminar put on by uh, Weston on this particular system on exactly how it works um, with it. Uh, basically, at one is I indicated it does save with the amount of heat that's put off on, on roofs. Second, it also reduces the amount of water runoff. And I know that's a concern that Athens has with the issue of uh, quick runoff, uh, flash flooding, 
and what's going on with the Hocking River. So it, in some ways, takes care of two of the issues that is a concern to our environment in this area. With that then, now the full roof, of course, would not be uh, a green roof because we have areas that are the residential areas uh, up on the upper part. Uh, the green roof would be the patio areas behind these uh, particular residential areas, and then those roofs on top of the, the last uh, of elevation would then have our standard roof on it, uh, mainly for the uh, issue of maintenance, how to get up there and maintain that then, uh, with it then. Um, that's kind of what I wanted to bring forward with you so you could see it. Um, I'd be willing to answer any questions you might have about it. What um, happens to a green roof in the wintertime? Mm -hmm. Uh, basically what happens to our grasses and our yards and stuff. Uh, and we get enough rain, unfortunately, in Athens, <laughs> in snow, that uh, the plants go dormant. And then once the uh, temperatures come back out, as we're now having now, they then kick back into uh, growing at that point. And, and the other nice thing about it is I, I would assume like any plants, you're going to have some areas that are possibly over time are going to die out because these are set up into flats. They can easily be those sections removed if you have a problem with a roof leak or roofs leak uh, that you can easily remove those sections out, look for the roof leak, repair them, and then put this back into uh, the area for the re that has been repaired, which was one of the issues they had with oh, back in the late 70s when we were designing underground structures, underground houses, underground churches and houses, you know, everyone is going the first go around of our energy back in the 70s and late 70s, we were doing underground structures for this exact same reason. Uh, issues we were having then was we were using three foot of dirt and then we had a roof leak. Then we had to get a bulldozer up there and dig away at a, a structure to find it and stuff. So they weren't too popular, but uh, these, these are gonna take care of a lot of those issues. Does it affect the um costs for heating and air conditioning? Actually, it's a good point. I should have brought that up. Actually, it improves the cost on heating and air conditioning, specifically air conditioning, because what you have is a buffer between the hot sun, a hot roof, although many roofs uh, use a white roof to help reduce on the air conditioning. But with the green roof itself, yes, it keeps the building a lot cooler, therefore reduces the uh, carbon footprint of the building in the heating of it then, or the air conditioning of it then. The um, seminar you were talking about next, the 17th. April 17th at the Holiday Inn. It's and at, what noon. Time? at noon. That's about the same time we're having a meeting here. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> I, I remember you sending, thank you for sending the invitation, but yeah. I remember looking at my calendar yeah. saying, uh, no, that's unfortunately, we hit it. So yeah. on that, then. We, it was what best we could find. We couldn't hit everyone's schedule with that. Then. I understand. Mm -hmm. On it, then. Is this the system they're using at Holzer? Yes, it is. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's one one we're using on their back patio. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. Thank you. Okay. Sounds exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Any other citizens wanting to speak? Um, our next meeting will be April seventeenth at noon, and we have the minutes to dispose of now. I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. Uh, am I applying someplace and where do I apply? I uh, don't think uh, we need some direction. Where, what's my next step? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think you talked to Steve to get ready. Well, are we considering this under Title 41? Are we considering no, we, it under the UCD? Side. We decided that. Yeah, okay. Because that was confusing mm -hmm. in the minutes. Mm -hmm. And I, I would encourage that that you look at the density. Again. The, look at what, sorry? The density yes. of the units is still uncomfortably high. Uh, uh, the cost effectiveness is where we have it now. Below that uh, will not be cost effective. Well, uh, just because a second, we, because there, I have something about the density to yes. ask. Steve, last year you gave us a um, list of the various uh, apartment complexes mm -hmm. in town and their density. Sure. Yeah, I have Could it broken out to area per person, area per unit. Um, I mean, I've got, it's like a big spreadsheet of all different ways to compare density, whatever your definition of density may be. Okay. 
Um, you want me to regenerate that yeah, and if you could regenerate add this that to it? For us, and that'll sure. make it easier. And then if you could also include the proposal that Mr. Perkins mm -hmm. has made so we can compare right, exactly. it with that. Um, and if you can find some numbers from other places. I found some units, density per units for some, for like Vancouver, um, mm -hmm. Manhattan, San Francisco, those sort of things. That would be, I think it would yeah. also help us, I think. Yeah, I think I'd, I don't know if I mentioned it at the last meeting, but I did check right it. afterwards. I had mentioned 1,250 square feet um, per unit. Mm -hmm. That was the minimum. And this one would be just below that, as I recall from the calculations that I did. So that would be another variance um, if the number of units fell, number of units divided in the total land area fell below 1,250. And that does not take into consideration um, any land area for the commercial uses. That's just strictly for the residential use. Is the green roof helps on that? Because, I mean, is it like adding a lot? Except it's on, on the second floor. Is it the same like if I had the, an extension of my lot uh, on the ground floor? Oh, I because it's covered with green? Yeah, I don't, I don't think no, so. No, I don't think it increases the lot size. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if we can count it kind of towards that. I mean, uh, because in all reality, this place where the, the students or the tenants will be able to go out and um, sunbathe or have a picnic or uh, right. they're going to have all the square, which I don't know how many thousand square feet we're talking. On. Uh, but they're not going to go out and sunbathe on the green roof, are they? Well, the, the green well, roof, actually, okay. <laughs> How I envision, if you looked in, in the brochure, there is actually would be patio areas on the green, green roof uh, so that each, uh, probably I would say about 60% of those units would have accessibility to the roof. Therefore, their living space would be an outside patio area uh, with that. And they would be then surrounded by a landscaping of grasses and flowers and stuff. So. Uh, and this I guess is that would be a good question if that patio area, if it's part of the roof structure, be, mm -hmm. could be added into uh, the square footages uh, at that point. And I think Steve would have to answer that. Um, also, that's it's on the south side. Are you talking about at the south? I'm trying to vision, envision it on the building design that you gave mm -hmm. us. So it would be, if you're looking at the Stimson, if you're looking head on to it, it would be on that. It would be on the back side. On the back side. Because uh, if you remember on that, when we took the elevations, we had several elements that were higher to break up the facade. And our goal was to eliminate the linear right. design of a building right. and to create um, block elements that would create more of a, a right. vertical as well as a horizontal. On the back side of that right. would be the patios and the yeah, green space. It didn't have a back elevation with yeah, those drawings. Yeah, we haven't okay. gotten that far yet okay. uh, with it. And, um, at this point, we show no, uh, in the design, no rear patios or balconies of those units. Uh, for the most part, the uh, units would go up their own interior stairwells to the half level, the third and a half floor, and then out, out door out onto a rear patio with the grass areas and flowers around it. Then. So it'd be a kind of a common grass area? Well, I think in some ways you, you don't want it to be common. Uh, it's, under the Ohio Building Code, we do have to provide barriers so a student does not fall off the roof right. uh, in that particular case. But also, I believe, we'll create barriers between those units uh, for the purpose of avoiding uh, issues that might be with uh, someone breaking into other units. Uh, two larger parties in one section, uh, you know, those kind of things to create a, a little bit better environment, a little more. I say semi-private space. I mean, if you do good design, you want to create private space, semi-private space, and public space. And I view the roof patio areas as being a semi-private space. And you see these units as being more um, luxury apartments. Is that how you would market them? Well, or? we've taken the bedrooms and, and made the bedrooms a little bit larger than what you would say is minimal for a bedroom. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we, most of the bedrooms are 10 by 12s, if my memory serves me right, where you can get by as small as a uh, uh, 7 by 10 if you wanted to under the code. Uh, and so in that sense, yes, uh, they do have uh, nice living room areas and stuff. So I, because of the nature where they are, 
Uh, with the proximity, I think it is going to be a little bit more upscale than many of the student rentals that you, you find in that region. Yeah. I like to add that because of the cost of, uh, uh, the whole structure has to be stronger for to have a green roof, um, and creates a lot of maintenance issues. Um, uh, the rents are going to have to be higher at the same time um, the, the apartment's going to have to be nice enough mm -hmm. to justify the... So yes, they will be on the higher end uh, um, because the numbers were tight before. So now when we, But again, they're going to pay more because they're going to have a lot more... They're going to be close to a town and they still have a yard to go, except the yard is on the roof instead of being... Uh, but they're all going to have access... Most of them are going to have access to the... Yes, most of them. Um, there's probably, as I said, probably half a dozen, six apartments that they're on the second floor level and do not have access to the upper third floor and out onto that half level. So there are right. a few that don't have that access. But even that, we can design it so they will have access as it's in a general area, you know, so they can go and still eat a sandwich upstairs. You know, it's like if it was in a, a yard in the back of a project. Um, again, uh, of course, we, you know, that's one of the solutions of the problem we have created here on, uh, on Stimson, but um, uh, to invite other people to, to go green, which costs a lot more on the green roofs, I think um, uh, that might be one of the things you guys can count it or, towards the density. You know, if you have a green roof, should some of the first one to do it in the residential in Athens, and we all like to see more of that. Um, might be one of the way to um, to invite other people to do it is to say, well, you can come towards something by having this roof. You get credit towards something, and I don't mean taxes. I mean, you know, like uh, we'll allow you something else. I um, wasn't here, and I apologize for the last meeting when this was presented. Get a bomb scare to I I have a. I'm very concerned about, as noted in the minutes, 25 on-the-street parking spots. Mm -hmm. Your intention is to take up all the on-street parking there. For there's other businesses and there's other impacts for, you know, that's all what's already existing. No, that's not my intention. The only reason I'm, I mentioned it last time. Well, we put a street. We we put on our drawings what is there. And how what is there now uh, now going to continue to be there? So by doing the project, we don't take any anything away from the street that's existing right now. One of the things that's kind of interesting, since you mentioned in these parking spots, the, the, we have the building right now. Then we have a, a walking area on the, if you're talking Palmer Street, and then you have, if I'm correct, uh, Steve, 14 feet of vertical parking. The 15, the, I think there are 15 spots on Palmer Street, which they dive in. in. If you're on, between Hawking Valley Bank and my building, the parking against the building, the on street building, it is a dive in parking, dive in against the building. At that parking spot, they actually pave, they, they actually um, uh, sidewalk, I guess you're going to say, starts 14 feet from the street. So then parking spots really. In order to park your car, you have to be over the, the, my, the private property. Then, because the city doesn't have any sidewalk there right now, we we providing uh, the the walking area. So, so the, the 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 what you call public and it is public parking spot is only 14 feet long. It's not legal unless the car will go over my um, uh, my property. And then, uh, uh, of course, if you don't have enough for the parking, you definitely don't have any sidewalk there. But we're willing to continue with the sidewalk area. We're willing to fix that nicer than it is now, because right now it's just really a grass area that people working on it. There's no grass there anymore. It's just a, a dirt uh, area. And uh, on our drawings, I'm sorry I don't have them with me, but you know it is. you guys have it on file, um, so the, the new project will have a I think six feet sidewalk. Okay, yes. Yeah, six feet sidewalk on our own property. Which, what I want you to understand, if I say no, I don't want to put sidewalk on my property. I'm going to put a fence on my property or a little flowers mm -hmm. on my property so that people don't walk on it. 
then the city will, if it was to put a sidewalk, gonna have to put a sidewalk where the parking is right now. Okay, because you only have 14 feet, which is not really, if it was private on, it would not be a legal parking there. Steve, am I correct? Is it 14? You went and measured it, I thought, right? Um, I went down to the site and measured from the curb line, which is approximately the property line. Um, I tried to obtain a survey from Andy Stone. Andy had the area surveyed also in relationship to dealings with uh, ADCO um, and the possibility of gaining access from Stimson down to the bowling alley. So the city does have a survey of that area. Um, if you measure from the curb out toward Palmer, um, where do you stop? Where do you draw the line when you're measuring a distance? There's no curb there to measure to. So essentially, I went out in the street, looked down the street by roller bowl where I did see a curb. Um, 16 to 18 feet from the property line slash curb line that exists out to what would be a projection of the curb line um, from down at roller bowl. But it's really hard to tell right there. With no curb, you know, people kind of wander back and forth. It's, it's a pretty wide open. <laughs> intersection there at certain times of the day. So I would say it's greater than 14 feet out to the traveled you know, surface of Palmer. Is it eight? Is it 18? Is it more like 17? Yeah. But again, the street department has looked at that where there is, could be a consideration to have parallel rather than perpendicular parking. Um, How about angle there. parking? Angle yeah. parking would work too with more limited um, area to work with. You could pick up parking spots as opposed to doing them parallel. Right. They're um, easy. They're so, but, <laughs> you know, that's all something in the works. Um, sidewalks, some sidewalks are on people's private property, some are on the right of way of the city. And in the case of right-of-way sidewalks, um, it's the adjacent property owner that's responsible for that. Council's done some sidewalks by assessment, I believe. Um, some they, you know, there's there's all different kinds of scenarios on sidewalks. But I think what we're, I know Andy, what we, he would like to see happen is if this project does proceed, coordination and cooperation between the city and the developer to come up with the best possible. Um, use of that land in there for an area that's identified as high pedestrian um, and particularly in the case of where we have people with disabilities you know trying to get to different available facilities in the neighborhood so it's part of it you know this is all kind of pieces of an overall plan coming together that no one may have suspected could happen um, so. so back to Mr. Brooks question of where does he stand now um, the next step is preliminary approval, right? And before we do the hearing on preliminary approval, we have to look at the list of variances. We have to look at the density question. What other, what other it questions? Needs to get, doesn't Chief Troxell have to look at it? Yeah, it has. Yeah. And you do. Well, I'd well, like for him to look at it anyway, because I think there's an issue of access to the back um, buildings. Oh, I see. You're talking about the actual complex itself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think there's some, some fire issues in there. I don't have a copy of the subdivision regulations with me, but there are a list of things that you have to provide for a preliminary Did review. Um, so, I mean, we could. That is the next step if okay. you're pers pursuing the approval of a planned unit development. And then at that time, um, some of the very specific. Uh, things that need variance, for example, would flesh out. Um, also, I don't think it specifically says that there's opportunity in there or necessity for other city departments to review, but well, you always have the option. We'd like to request of, it. Of sending that through to have all the departments look at it. The, not only uh, for the fire department to look at it, but uh, you remember when we had that request on um, Mill Street, we asked to have the water and sewer departments look at the infrastructure and comment on mm -hmm. its condition and its suitability for having that additional load. I'd like to have that kind of report, too, because Debbie Phillips and I are working together on collecting information for areas that are recommended in the plan for higher density so that we know if something is 
going to be built, what else needs to go with it? What I can do is once I have I've received um, an application, I can bring that to staff meeting. The staff meets every week. Um, and then request for each department to review it and provide their findings in writing. Then those can all be reviewed and a boiled down administrative document can be produced. Not that those, you know, we don't want real detailed input from each department, but that may not be all the, inf you know, you might not want all of that going mm -hmm. necessarily back to the developer. Um, but it might all go back. And it's a process normally that we've used administratively over the years. Uh, for projects that would not have even come before the Planning Commission, ones that were reviewed in-house prior to, prior to Title 41 especially. Uh, that would have been administrative in-house. That's the process that we used. Yeah, I think that's the best process because since, you know, the idea that Andy wants to look at it because there's these other exactly. pedestrian access issues. And there will be things probably to come up to from departmental comments that you wouldn't even expect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We would hope, I and mean, that's <laughs> that's what I would hope. So, so Mr. Perthus needs to meet with Mr. Pearson. Um, he needs to provide me all the information required in Title 2109 um, preliminary application for planned unit development. In the meantime, you're going to get us the density information and right. the uh, infrastructure information and survey and the survey. On the survey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I went down the street department right before the meeting. Uh, Andy has a survey, but I'll, I wasn't, he wasn't there. Nobody knew where it was, but I'll give it to you. Okay. Any, any other questions, comments? Uh, approval of the minutes. Um, I had a question. Steve, did you get a copy of the minutes? No, I don't think so. Under two cases, the third sentence, one, two, <clears throat> third, third, second, on this Demetrius Prokos, 1113 West Stimson Avenue, it says Steve feels that this best fits under Title 41. It's yeah, I think it should be under BUD. Yes. Right. I'll give it. I think I'd mentioned at a couple meetings that I believed even though it was in one building, it was mixed use and therefore it would be a planned unit development yeah, okay. as opposed yeah, to that's a site plan review. Okay. Right. That's well, and it, it looks actually like it's two buildings because of the back part of the back part of the lot. There's the well, it's connected. It's connected. It's, connected? it's the great yes. okay. what's a building. Right. And it's just difficult to see. And look at it now. Okay. Um, Any other questions about the minutes? I move we accept the minutes with those additions or amendments. Do I have a second? Second. Oh. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, would somebody like to move for I adjourn? move we adjourn. 140.